Hello, this is Eugene from Polyga, and welcome to our 3D scanning tutorial. Have you had any issue scanning smaller objects using a 3D scanner? Is it moving around a lot that you're having a lot of trouble to get accurate, precise scan of it? Well, today I'm going to walk you a step-by-step -step tutorial into capturing precise scan using an easy workflow and using our C506 macro scanner. With this in mind, let's go into the tutorial. I'm going to show you tips and tricks into how to set up easy shots for 3D scanning, as well as post-processing tips to allow you to get a better capture for the objects you're scanning. So a bit of information, our C506 is a macro scanner that has accuracy up to 12 microns, and we're using our proprietary software FlexScan 3D to do the captures. If you wish to learn more about these products, make sure to click the link in our description, check out our website to learn more about 3D scanning. So let's get started. The first step of 3D scanning is all about setting your objects right for your workflow. Having an object in an inconvenient position can lead to a lot of problems scanning in the future because you're spending a lot of time and energy trying to manipulate the scanner to capture the right data. To do this, I recommend you to use a modeling clay and put your object on top of it. In this case, we're scanning a really small piece of rock, approximately 5mm to 7mm wide. Place it on top of a modeling clay and we can use post-processing tools like FlexScan 3D to cut out the modeling clay features in our scanning. So as you see in this setup right here, I have the modeling clay and the rock put together and we have elevated this on a platform coupling with our 3D scanner C506 on top of a tripod. So this will allow me to manipulate the rock in a 360 degree slope and you can capture all the data from all different sides and put it all together in the software itself. So let's move to step 2, scanning our objects using our 3D scanner. To start scanning, just boot up FlexScan 3D, our 3D scanning software, and locate to the Scanner tab, click New and locate to a 3D scanner. In this case, we have Compact C series with the C506. Just click OK right here, and it is going to connect to the scanner. As you see on the right side, there are two viewfinders that represents the two cameras that are capturing data on the C506. So this means that the scanner is correctly connected to the computer. Now, to start working with a 3D scanner, just click Project tab. Click the Project tab. And this is going to be your workspace that you're interfacing with majority of your time for 3D scanning. As you see on the right side, you have two viewfinders that are showing the image captured for 3D scanning. The red means overexposure and the blue means underexposure. Now since we're only scanning the rock in this case, it doesn't really matter what kind of color we get on the puddling clay right here. So just make sure the rock itself is not over or underexposed. Another thing you can do is try to move the object as close as to the middle of the crosshair as possible. This is going to give you the most precise scanning image compared to when it is lying outside the crosshair. And lastly, make sure the object is focused. As you see in this case right here, the rock's feature is very well defined. You can see all the patterns in it, so that means this is a very well focused image. If you move too far away, it's going to be blurry. If we move too close, it's going to do the same thing. So just make sure it is focused, well exposed, and you're good to go. Like that. A little bonus tip right here. Before you start scanning, make sure the objects is reflecting light correctly. This is because we're using structure like technology to scan our objects. We're shooting a light beam using a projector, and we're going to capture the light reflected using the two cameras. So if your object is black colored or it is reflective, it's not going to help with a 3D scanning. Make sure to apply scan spray before you start scanning the object. 
So let me go ahead and apply scan spray to the rock and I will get back to you to see how much better it will perform. Okay, so now we have placed the objects correctly on our setup. And now it is well lit, we can start scanning. So what we're going to do is that we'll take a multiple scan surrounding the object and at the end of it, we are going to capture, combine all the captured images together into one 3D object. So I will show you step by step in this case. For example, we have captured the front face of this object and what we're going to do is that we're going to rotate it slightly as you see on the viewfinder right here on the right side and we're going to capture the second face of the objects click scan and after that we have two different faces of the objects and we can align it using the geometry features of the modeling clip to move to the objects just hold the alt key on your keyboard and click the left mouse key to move the objects as you see in the screen right here you can hold alt plus shift to rotate the object <clears throat> then you can you can do alt shift and mouse click to bring it front and back if you wish to move the object around for alignment purposes just hold alt and mouse click in the middle so you can check all these detailed instructions on the flexscan 3d manual online we have uh, the link in the description but that's basically the basic control of what you get with flexscan 3d so what we're going to do is that we're going to align the features of the modeling clay as you see the fingerprint right here is a really good indication of that and we're going to select these two using control and left click and click select geometry and bang this is how you get the capture of the rock so now we're going to rotate it multiple times until we have get 360 degree capture of the objects and uh, we're going to combine them all Okay, perfect. So now as you see, we have got the top half of the rock captured right here. So now what we're going to do is that we can deselect these images and we're going to do the exact same thing flipping the rock upside down. And after capturing these two faces of the rock, we're going to combine them together using features geometry alignment. So let's deselect these pictures click yes and we're going to flip the rock upside down and redo the whole thing again now what we're going to do is that we're going to hold the control key and the left mouse key together and this is going to give me a lasso tool to delete my object so hold control and left mouse key to bring out the lasso tool carefully slice it delete now we have the two side of the rock. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is to identify the geometric feature of the rock and align them together. So you can just shift, hold shift and alt key, left key and manipulate it in a way. It should be like top and bottom like this. So it should not be too hard to identify. see there's ridges right here so that's a really good sign scroll in like that and hey looks like we're missing an opening face of the rock so that's okay this happens a lot of the time just click select geometry align them right now and we can capture a single face of this rock and uh, stick it on there and this will do the job
Okay. Clean this up. And this is good to go. Just making sure. Alright. If you're looking for something that gives you a bit more alignment, you can click Find Align right here. And this is what's gonna give you a fine alignment. So now we have this face right here, let's bring it in and we can finish the last bit of this rock. You can identify the features. I know the rock is pretty difficult to do so so uh, but you can kind of see the little part that is bulging up right so this is where we're going to align it all together now I think this is actually upside down yeah you see this part right here you can see this part here that's bulging up compared to here so this this part right here this part right here so let's position the face together like this Breaking out, rotate it a bit to match the curvature, make sure it is rotated correctly, bring it in, and that's pretty much good to go, just select all of them, click select geometry and bang, this is almost the completion of the 3D scan. Now at last, what we're going to do is to do some post-processing. To do this, we're going to select all of them together, combine, using the combine button, and this is going to combine all of the scans together into a singular, singular entity. We can click finalize, select precise merge, and you can get a bunch of options to fiddle with right here. I wouldn't recommend you to play with it right away because there are so much many options we can do with the sidebar menu. So select none for color processing, select low for hole filling, and we can do those separately after finalizing the objects. As you see right here, the objects is it's not entirely perfect, there's a bit of holes right here, but that's okay. Now what we're going to do is to click scan and go to hole filling. This is going to show us all the holes we have for our finalized scan. So simply drag this little sidebar to the side and we can start filling the holes right here. Depending on your, uh, your application, you might want to leave the hole outside. Usually it is depending on the hole size that it it will auto fills the hole. So just click auto fill and you see most of the holes are done already. If you wish to do it manually, just click on this hole right here and click fill selected. I could have just auto fill everything for you, but to give you a bit of reference, I left a few holes unfilled. So that's pretty much it. We have finished scanning a tiny piece of rock. And this tutorial really rocks, man. No pun intended. So this concludes the 3D scanning tutorial with the C506 scanner. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Leave it down in the comments and I'll take a look and reply it to you. Have a good day, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one.